things are going well. Things are going normal. I'm meeting lots of normal people. False. I felt like I was trying to meet normal people, but it turned out everybody was just on mescaline. It, this is the experience of dating, I feel like. If I get drunk, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who gets drunk next to you. Hello, and welcome back to another video of me humiliating myself. This is part two of this series. If you haven't watched part one, what are you doing, dude? It's not gonna make a ton of sense to you. I would go back and watch part one, or I guess enjoy this, and I, I hope it still feels good. This is a video series that I wanted to do because I currently find myself in quite a lovely, loving, amazing, romantic relationship, and I get a lot of questions about it. I get a lot of questions about my relationship, which I'm happy to share, but I feel like that's not that interesting. I feel like what's much more helpful when you're looking for love is to hear about like how stupid and how frustrating it can be for so long, for so long until you find the right thing. I think when I was single, I sometimes experienced this attitude from people who are in relationships, acting a little like holier than thou, a little like, righteous like they just earned their relationship and if you were single you hadn't earned it yet and I don't know about that I don't know how I feel about that now listen I've done a lot of self-reflection a lot of reflecting on my flaws my mistakes and there are a lot of mistakes okay I've made a lot of mistakes and that's really important to do for dating but in addition ultimately I think it's kind of a numbers game I think it gets very frustrating and really deflating it's trash all the way down and then one day it's not don't give up. So that's really what I'm gonna show here. The sheer randomness and stupidity that is dating. Emphasis on stupidity. I did a lot of stupid things. I'm trying to emphasize that here. I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus. I will say actually, these are not even my best stories. My best stories can't be aired because I would get sued. And I'm actually not trying to drag anyone other than myself. So, okay, after the last video, we left off Right here, 2021. I just got out of a six year relationship. I'm not gonna share many details about that because this person gave me six years of their life. I'm so grateful to them. I still have so much care and tenderness for this person. And at the end of the day, we were both pretty unhappy, unfortunately. It was sad, but I think it's been for the best for both of us. I moved to DC. And I signed the lease. I took some time to reflect, to mourn. The dog's not here anymore, the dog's in Ohio. Let's not talk about it. But I did these. I took some time to live alone, to frolic in my individualness. Very important. I was about the age of 29 here. Old, old hag, right? But after a while, I still ultimately wanted to find somebody to share my life with. Gross. And this begins what I consider like my adult dating life. And that brings us to Tony Soprano. This was not really somebody I dated, but I do feel like it was a really important milestone in my romantic history. I started having very intense, very detailed, lascivious, scintillating dreams about a cat who looked like Tony Soprano. It, 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 was, it, was a, it was a literal cat who looked like Tony Soprano from The Sopranos. Very wonderful textured character, HBO character. I can't explain these dreams. They were a bit of an awakening to me and they were persistent. I don't know what to say about it exactly, except that um, this experience did really have a big impact on me and I needed a few weeks to process it. And that brings us to Nice. A man I shall refer to as Travolta. This is because he often and frequently declared to me that he looked like John Travolta. This was something he would say to me a lot. He would announce this a lot, kind of like in public forums, just kind of announce this to people. It was something that happened a lot. He was a very nice, he was a very sweet guy. We dated for a couple months, had a very nice time. Then eventually it became clear to me that he wasn't really looking for something serious, which is fine, but did not align with me. I wish him all the best. It was at this point that something weird started happening. I started making extensive and steamy eye contact with a man on the streets who shall heretofore be known as Street Man. Uh, this one's hard to explain. He was a stranger on the street. We just locked eyes a lot in and around my neighborhood over a series of months. He was very handsome. He seemed normal. I mean, I don't know anything about him, but he had eyes. And um, this went on for months. I even mentioned it in a video. And I just saw this hot dude. And then we like locked eyes. I swear we locked eyes. Two strangers passing each other's streets. Like so, passing like so. And as I will, I create an entire romantic dynamic 
um, in my head, which are some of the best ones. <laughs> I have an update about Street Man. I was driving. He was walking. Almost caused a car crash. It was as mystical, magical as Street Man has ever been. I looked to my left and there's the Street Man. And we did, you know, we did the passing like so. I don't know what's real. Eventually, I was swiping on a dating app and I encountered the Street Man. The Street Man swiped on me. I have a like from Street Man. I've been talking about this guy for months. I've checked out for months. What do I do? I feel sick. I can't. I'm sweating through my sweater. I gotta get out of here. Someone let me out. A high drama dynamic. I actually made a whole video series, three part video series on this. I should probably take that video down. We did go on a number of dates over a few weeks. As it turned out, I think we had a better connection just on the street than we did in person, which is why I would say I think it's really important to meet people in person and not just through eye contact, although the eye contact was fun. We ended up parting ways. I wish them all the best. Okay, that is that. And that brings us to a very nice man who shall be known as Not Steve. I can't, I couldn't think of a better nickname. His name is Not Steve. It's Not Steve. Not Steve was a very lovely man. I actually respected him a lot. We had a very nice time together. There was one issue of a bit of a language barrier. And I will say the blessing of this was that I think it really highlighted to me how much I needed to work on my communication. I'm a pretty uh, blunt person, but also sometimes I'm not, you know? Like sometimes I get so nervous in romantic dynamics that I'm, I think I'm being direct and I'm not. This became abundantly clear with Not Steve. I asked to meet him for a drink with the intention of concluding our courtship. I went in there trying to break up. I don't know what happened. Something happened and when I walked out, instead of being broken up, we were, um, dating exclusively. It was very confusing. I don't think either of us wanted it and I don't think either of us really knew how it happened. That became a moment where I decided to start working on my communication skills, okay? After several more miscommunications, we did end up concluding that dynamic. He is genuinely a great person. I wish him all the best. This is what I'm gonna say. Personal opinion, I think a lot of like finding the one, finding the one that works, this mystery man, it has to do with saying no to the wrong relationships. One thing I really did realize while dating Not Steve, he was really nice. We had a lot of fun together. It was like a nice person to have nice dates to go on with, but I also knew that he probably wasn't quite that serious or quite that ready or maybe just didn't quite like me enough. But if I wanted to, he would keep seeing me. If I wanted to, he'd keep spending time with me. And I think it's really easy to be like, okay, well, I know this isn't the thing, but I'll just keep doing it until I find the right person. I think that can get you in trouble. I think that you can waste a lot of time with the thing that you already know isn't working for you. And personally, I found that it was important to, rather than spend time with the wrong fit, just to be alone. I enjoy being alone. And if you're alone, it lets you feel hungry. It lets you feel that hunger. Like a little bit of loneliness might be good to light a fire under your butt to go out and meet new people and put effort into it and put energy into it. Cause it is draining. But if you're just like, kind of sedating yourself by seeing somebody who kind of works and like you can have nice dates and it's fine enough, kind of sedates you. And I think it could keep me from putting in the effort where I needed to. A big part of finding the right person is getting really intentional about not seeing the wrong people. Maybe that sounds obvious, but I feel like that was a hard one for me to learn. Okay, speaking of the wrong people, that brings us to the Mad Hatter. I went on a single date with this precious, precious gem of a boy. He invited me to a first and last date at a local DC dive bar called the Mad Hatter. The kind of bar where you wouldn't be like that surprised to find that someone's selling mescaline in the bathroom. But you know, whatever, I like a dive. I'll give it a chance. I like an adventure, okay? I showed up and he proceeded to tell me how he likes to invite women to this particular bar to weed out those who are just trying to use him for his money. I nodded along reflectively, enthusiastically, not telling him that I made more money than him, but just listening as he told me how all the women he works with are idiots. And it was at this point in the date that I realized that between these lectures, these free lectures I was receiving, he was going to the bathroom to sniff certain substances between drinks. Suffice it to say, I wish him all the best. On the subject of thriving in love, this video is sponsored by Thrive market. Are you impressed by that segue? <laughs> if you don't know Thrive Market, where you been, girl? They are an online membership-based grocery. They deliver straight to your door. The best thing about Thrive Market, listen up, well, it's two things. And if you live, eat, consume by a certain lifestyle, gluten-free, paleo, 
plant-based. You can filter your food, your snacks, your groceries by the lifestyle very, very easily. I try to eat all whole foods, but I'm also a very big snacker. So when I started using Thrive Market, I could very easily update all of my snacks to healthy alternatives. For this month though, I went a different direction. With my order from Thrive Market, I did all my household items. Let me tell you what I'm so sick of. I am so sick of getting my household cleaning items, soaps, all of that from a convenience store. And oh my God, I can't believe the prices. I actually can't believe the prices. They're criminal there. So let me tell you about my recent revelation. This is how much you'll save with Thrive Market. Walita skincare, I use this on my lips. I have super dry lips. I use this on my hands, super dry hands in the winter especially. This is usually 1962 on Thrive Market. I got this for 1359. It is huge savings. It's like over 30% cheaper and that's just a single item. So that's what you're saving on all your products. It's actually so, so significant. Total on my recent like home goods, household items, I saved over $29. That's the number I like. We got Dr. Bronner's, Mrs. Myers. Mrs. Myers and Dr. Bronner. Do they know each other? I wonder. Lufa, a body exfoliator, a hydrating facial moisturizer. And this is not a household good, but I've talked about this a million times. Aloha bars are my favorite snack bars. They just came out with a peanut butter flavor. And yeah, I'm on it. I'm all over it. They always, always, always have good deals. It's so worth it. You can do like a monthly membership. Just pay a month at a time. It's 12 bucks you will make that money back in a single order, or you can do their yearly membership. I think it's $5 a month. It delivers right to your door. There's no tipping. Uh, it's just like convenient, easy. I know I'm getting stocked with good items. If you want to try Thrive Market today, you can get 30% off your first order and also a gift worth up to 60 bucks. Just click the link. I'm gonna put it in the description of this video, thrivemarket.com slash Caroline Winkler. That's my name. Click the link and live your life. It's very simple. Thank you to them for sponsoring. Here we go. So this brings us to about 2023. Suffice it to say, things are going well. Things are going well. Things are going normal. I'm meeting lots of normal people, having a great time, false. I felt like I was trying to meet normal people, but it turned out everybody was just on mescaline. It, this is the experience of dating, I feel like. And I think it's hard to remember when you haven't been dating in a long time, or you've been married for a while, or coupled up for a while. Like, it is truly wild out here. and. I know I'm being silly in this video, but in real life, real life when I'm not making a YouTube video, I swear to God I was being normal. I swear to God. I felt like I was being normal and it just feels crazy out there sometimes. That's what I'm saying, okay? It just feels freaking crazy out there. This is the state I was in, at which point I went on a date with someone we shall refer to as the Roomba. The Roomba is a man I met who he was like very sweet and very cute, smart, but there was something about him that was like a little robotic. It was kind of hard to figure out. Something, so there's a little robot in him. He was just kind of controlled. It was interesting. Um, just had a first date with I'm, I mean, I was like very attracted to him. I found him to be very cute and adorable. He seemed almost a little proper, maybe just a little proper like I was. I like didn't want to curse in front of him. <laughs> I'm fucking colloquial. I'm colloquial as hell. I'm colloquial as hell out here. He had really like uh, kind of reflective, insightful things to say, but also was humble and generous and kind and really smart and reflective. Like that's actually pretty rare. Okay, a good date. We went on a couple more dates. Um, I had my second date with tonight and I will say, I like wasn't thinking about things the whole time. I was just like present and just like laughing when I wanted to laugh and commenting when I wanted to comment and doing what I wanted. I wasn't like thinking about things. That's like what I want. That's truly what I want. On our third date, he took me ice skating, which I'm very bad at. So the entire hour that we were ice skating, he took both my hands in both of his hands and held my hands the entire time and skated backwards for an hour so that he could hold my hands and hold me up and talk to me. I was kind of losing my mind. I am vlogging. I'm vlogging to save my life right now. I'm vlogging to save my life. I wanna throw up. I have taken a break from dating. I've taken a break from dating and then, and then I untook my break from dating. Went on a date with this guy and it was pretty good. So we went on a second date and it was pretty good. Third date, 
that was pretty good uh, and now i'm 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 going on date number four this evening in like an hour and i'm at that point somewhere between date number three and date number four i reached that point where i'm like i want to throw up i don't want to say like i like him so much because i obviously don't know him right we've been on three dates we i don't know him but what i do know i like and it's like a combination of characteristics I've never met in somebody before. I didn't even think really existed in this, in a person. I'm at that feel like I'm, it's, it's basically infatuation. Like I'm at that state of being, I'm starting to be infatuated. Yeah. Which is mostly like, there's some thrill in that, but it's like 90% fear. It's 90% terror. It's 90% torture. Like I'm in so much torture right now. I don't even want to see him again. I don't, it's not even worth it. It's not even worth it. That's the state I'm in. That's where I am right now. He's probably just like chilling. He's probably just like beep, 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 whatever. So I, I have some questions I really need answers to. Weird questions. I can't explain it, but like some questions I need answers to and I'm gonna get some answers. I'm gonna get some answers or so help me God, I'm gonna get some answers. I'm fucked. When I'm lonely, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's lonely when I'm too. Couple more dates. Fifth date with the Roomba. On our fifth date, we went for a run together. Cute, adorable. At the end of the date, he went in to kiss me. And for reasons that I will never be able to explain to myself or anyone else, as a response to his kiss, when he pulled away, the words that came out of my mouth were, peace be with you. I'm not a particularly religious person. It wasn't a reference to anything. I don't know. He kissed me and I said, peace be with you. And it was um, in my mind, a moment of panic. I don't know why I did that. Uh, everything else seemed to be going pretty well until that moment. But he just kind of laughed and looked at me and said, and also with your spirit. And then he walked the fuck away. It was, I was, I mean, at this point I was basically like totally enamored with him and I still kind of couldn't read his roboticness. Like he was very, very sweet with his actions, but he wasn't very verbally effusive. And I think I really needed that. I'm a very verbal person. So for our next date, then I decided I was gonna confront him. I was just gonna ask him. I'm trying to be a better communicator. Just ask the hard questions, figure out how they feel. La, 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 who cares? I'm gonna die. He invited me on that date to go for a, like several hour hike in the mountains. The heck? I was so nervous just to be, I don't, I don't actually like to talk to people that long. So I was like kind of stressed out about like, what am I gonna say? Where am I gonna pee? But then I realized, okay, he's stuck in the woods. I'm gonna confront him in the woods. He's not gonna have anywhere to go. I'm just gonna be like, What's the deal, Roomba? You're very sweet. We're spending a lot of time together, but I actually like can't really tell what your feelings are. You don't really say things so effusively. What, what's going on? Are we friends? Are we friends who sometimes kiss and then bless each other? I don't know. So I had this big plan. I was going to confront him in the mountains where he can't, he can't get away. Go on this whole hike. I'm stressed the whole time. We're chit-chatting for hours, but I'm like not even really present because the whole time I'm thinking about when am I going to bring up this conversation. We get to this little mountain peak. We're looking out over the mountain peak. Cute, 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 cute. I'm distracted. Next thing I know, he's reaching into his backpack and pulls out of his backpack a beautifully wrapped package, a gift, and a handwritten note. For me, it was for me, surprise. Remember this was our sixth date. On our sixth date, this man wrote me a handwritten card. I basically couldn't breathe at this point. And he hands me this gift to open and the note, and I'm trying to read the note. At this point, I've basically lost all literacy. I can't even read at this point. Literally all I was thinking was just like, be chill, be chill. Act like you've been treated nicely before. I didn't want him to like catch on that this was like shocking treatment. So I was trying to be really chill, but I also at the same time couldn't read. I think I looked at this card for like five minutes cause I, I like truly, I've, I was like temporarily dyslexic. And eventually I came to understand that the card was just saying how much he enjoyed spending time together over the past few weeks, how much I brightened his day. I opened the gift and it was a book that we had talked about together. And then I looked up at him and he kissed me in the sign of the cross.
just as like the sweetest, weirdest, nonsensical callback to Peace Be With You. It, I, I, I basically wanted to throw myself off a mountain in the good way. I was completely floored. <laughs> I did not end up confronting him about what his feelings were. I felt like a little more secure at that point that maybe he liked me. We continued our hike down the mountain and I acted really chill and unbothered the whole time. I was really chill just like that. I was just like, breathe normal, act normal, act like, act like people have been nice to you before. I mean, I wished for death. I wished for death. That brings us to a few weeks later. I was developing some serious feelings for the Roomba, possibly beginning to fall in love with him. I was, you know, in denial about that, but it seemed like a possibility. But as nice as he was and like sweet as his actions were, I think I really needed to hear the words. Like, I think I just needed to hear him say, I like you, which is probably stupid in retrospect because his actions were really clear, but I don't know, I'm just a verbal person. I really needed the words and he wasn't verbally effusive like that. And so I was really in my head and I was like, you know what the problem is? I haven't put myself out there. I haven't given him the words. I haven't said how I feel. So I need to put myself out there. I'm gonna tell him once and for all how I feel. I'm gonna open myself either to him reciprocating or to rejection, and then I'll know. Very dramatic. So I sent him a text. That was probably stupid. It was probably stupid to do over text, but it's what I did. I do stupid stuff sometimes. And I just said how I felt very plainly. You know, you give me butterflies, blah, 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 blah. I put my feelings out there, waited for a reply. This was pretty late at night. And the text I got back did not sound good. It sounded really bad. In the classic Roomba robot controlled formality, it was something like, that's so sweet. I too have appreciated having the opportunity to get to know you, la 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 la. It went on like that, it was extremely painful. I was like, oh, this is the text you send somebody if you're trying to let them down easy, right? I sent it to like all my girlfriends, obviously boys, that's what happens, the text gets sent to all the girlfriends. I was like, this is a letting you down easy text, right? This is the text you send when someone says their feelings and you don't have the same feelings, but you wanna let them down easy. This is the nice text you send, right? That's a no, I think I got a no back. And my friends were like, yeah, it doesn't sound good. This was at midnight. I was actually in the middle of filming a bathroom makeover video. I had to film this video in the middle of the night. I was devastated. Oh man, you know what's funny? No, nothing's funny. I just got some like crushing news about a guy. I don't think it was good. I don't know, but I have to film this. So just know. Just know that I'm acting the hardest I've ever could because I'm pretty crushed. Okay, sweet little fucking vignette. I was completely devastated. Like, I was falling in love with this guy. And I was pretty sure he had just told me he didn't feel the same. I, all I wanted to do was cry. And I just keep filming this video. But plot twist, we had a date scheduled for the next day. So I just showed up to this date and was like, okay, I guess this is when he's gonna end things with me. Like. I kind of thought we were getting more serious, but I guess I guess he's gonna end things now that I said my feelings, like, okay, whatever, at least I got an answer, give it to me, whatever, give me your best. So I went on this freaking date, fully prepared to have him end things with me, and I showed up and he introduced me to his friends and said, oh, this is Caroline, my girlfriend. News to me, it was news to me. I didn't know I was his girlfriend. I'd never heard the word before. I thought he just broke up with me. I thought, what, what, when did this happen? I wasn't sure, I was confused. But again, I acted very chill, just like this. I acted very chill and I just nodded. I just nodded as if I knew, obviously I'm his girlfriend, I knew that. So we continued on this date. I was being very, very chill, being a girlfriend, I guess. And later on when we were alone, I said to the Roomba, I said, you know, I was a little surprised. I kind of thought you were breaking things off with me after that text last night. And to this, he was shocked, shock and awe. I explained to him how I was like, well, I just read that text as like kind of letting me down easy or like you didn't really say that much in it, la 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 la. He was completely shocked and told me that he was no not trying to dump me, but in fact was falling in love with me. This was a welcome yet confusing turn of events. I said, okay, I, me too. 
deal. So we started being boyfriend, girlfriend, which apparently we'd already been doing. And we have been together ever since. And if you haven't put it together yet, the Roomba is none other than Justin. Wow, 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 wow. We're in love, etc., 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 la, 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 la. I know I sound like an idiot through almost all of this story, and I am. There's no but, there's no, I'm not gonna contradict you on that, that's just a fact we can agree on. But in addition, I think ultimately it was really hard for me to believe that somebody good was actually treating me well. And I think that's the experience for a lot of people. I think once you are exposed enough to like a lower standard of treatment, you can get used to it. Eventually, somewhere in this mess, I could recognize the standard of treatment that I didn't want anymore. And I would end things with people when it wasn't quite what I was looking for. But still, when I encountered the real thing, it felt really hard to believe. It was a funny thing where like, I didn't want less than that, but it still felt, it just felt hard to believe. In addition, I will report. I will reflect that something I learned from starting to date Justin is that I really overemphasized words, you know, love languages and all that. The Roomba's actions were so clear, so consistent, so caring and sweet, but I was really distracted by the fact that he didn't put it into words that much, which I think that's on me, that's my bad. And I think it was unfair of me to like overlook how consistent and clear his actions were. So if this video series does nothing else, I hope it shows you that A, I am undoubtedly a fool. B, it's important to sever spending time with people who are wrong for you. Spend time alone, build up that hunger. Valuing both words and actions, not just one or the other. Look at their actions, words are cheap. And I hope that you don't get deflated by the process. I took lots of breaks from dating. I didn't really cover that in this. There's a lot of things that are left out of this. Cause taking breaks from dating, they're just not that, it wasn't that funny. I was just like hanging out by myself and life was normal and no one was like doing drugs on a date in a dive bar next to me. So like there's not that many good stories, but I took a lot of breaks from dating so that I didn't just get bitter and jaded and exhausted. And, um, and I don't know about the rest. I don't know where the rest of the story will go. Embracing love means embracing a risk and I'm trying my best to do that. I'm working on it, and I hope you get to do the same. Thanks for joining me. Sorry to Justin that I made this video. When I, wake up, well I, know I don't know if it looks see-through, but it's not. There's like a tan, there's a tan dress under this. Anyway, I just feel like I need to say that for my mom. And then I'm gonna act so chill. You should see me. You should see me try and act fucking chill around him. I'm barely moving. I'm barely breathing. I've never, I moved, I've never moved so little in my life. I think it's like, it's like I'm in like the movie Alien and I feel like if they like hear me or smell me, they'll like smell, he'll su like smell the scent of my fear. Is that the right movie? If I move too much, he's gonna smell the scent of my fear. So I'm just trying to stay really still and like maybe he won't notice I'm here. While we're on a date. Remember, you can go to thrivemarket.com slash Winkler to get 30% off your first order plus a free gift worth up to 60 bucks.